Hey everyone. Hello. It's been a while since we've spoken face to face. Or mic to monitor, I guess. Yeah. Firstly, I wanted to thank everyone for their warm welcome of Basil and the overall reception of the electric railway. It's been a big passion project of mine and I'm glad to see it finally out for everyone to enjoy. James, Chase and I worked tirelessly on it for a good year or two. So from all three of us, we wanted to say thank you. Thank you. Speaking of James and Chase, for those who decided to click off the electric railway before it finished, you may have missed our new production name, Why Pictures. Essentially, the three of us work on each other's projects together. Instead of having one person carry the heavy weight or butting heads with contradicting ideas, everything can come together nicely when we have a place to plan everything out as a team. You'll be seeing that name a lot more in videos in the future. Tales of Thomas has gone through some vigorous changes as of late. Planning episodes, adding to the history and lore, coming up with a plethora of new characters and bringing back some old ones. With all these changes coming, I need to explain some background first. If you happen to notice, I recently shortened season 1 by removing 3 episodes from the playlist. I've explained it through many Twitter posts or Discord messages, but giving it its own segment in a video should explain some inconsistencies with the series going forward. For season 1 of Tales of Thomas, I really had no clue where I wanted to go with the series. I aimed for recreating the 19th season down to the episode style, visuals, and more or less canon timeline. Really, it was just a collection of random episodes with the Tales name slapped on it. Back when James over on the Epic Lafito channel started work on the Larry saga, he asked myself and Chase to help develop such a big project. After that, we started work on the remaining episodes of Season 3 of Epic Lafito's series. As we started to work on more things together going forward and spitballing ideas for each other's videos left and right, it got to a point where writing Season 2 of Tales of Thomas started to go a bit sideways. So, instead of fighting between history, canon, and changes to characters, we decided to set both our series in the same universe, so writing and designs would be easier to interchange. Coming up with a season-long game plan for both our series help expand on certain aspects of the island, as well as making sure we didn't step on each other's feet when it came to stories and interactions. So now, when we all work in episodes together, it's under one timeline. So we aren't jumping between what characters did differently or accidentally getting facts wrong. That's why you'll see some connections to other episodes, such as Merlin taking the rails and steel to Sodor on top of the class, or Class 40 taking the goods to the mainland in the electric railway. You'll see a lot more of these connections later on in both our series. Even Larry and Basil have appeared side by side in the Season 2 opening. With the timeline being connected, we also decided to set the current era of both our series, Season 2 for me and Season 3 for James, in the late 70s, following Thomas Theorist's idea on how the CGI timeline played out in realistic years. We currently have no idea if we'll ever get to the present day, but having the Thomas universe actually feature some time progression is definitely a fun concept, and we'd like to see how this can affect changes on the railway and within characters. A good example of this is seeing an older Nancy in Fanning the Flame, who's now doing exams in school and babysitting the Percival kids, where she was just a young girl back in Season 4 of the original series. So, why were three episodes cut from Season 1? Well, Blue Mountain Zack, The Harwick Haunting, and Silent Stafford were originally connected to Isle of Trains 323 series, Thomas the Train's Adventures. These are easily identified by having Zack and Gilbert star in two episodes and having one episode take place inside of another episode entirely. But with my series going forward and being connected to Epic Lafitos, these three episodes can contradict what we have planned. So if Zack and Gilbert appear in both Tales of Thomas and Thomas the Train's Adventures, they'd be in the same series, right? And if they're not in Sajun's stories, that means that's a completely different series. But since we want Tales of Thomas and Sudden stories to be connected, that means we need to take Zack and Gilbert out of the mix together. I know it's very confusing, this is literally the best way I can explain it. So, for example, Dexter was converted back into a red branch line coach in Thomas the Train's Adventures, but in Meals and Wheels, we can see he's still a mobile classroom painted in his yellow livery. Or how Charlie is serious and runs the yard with Stanley in Thomas the Train's Adventures, but in our series, he's an absolute goofball and always causing chaos in the yard. As well as the fact that Stanley's moved to Great Waterton following the events of Snow Help at all. Even Defenders of Sodor being based upon the past seven years of the series, directly contradicts Splodge's canon introduction in How the Diesel 10 Stole Christmas. It may look a little confusing when we're using some of the same models, but in summary, these are connected, but these are not. 
There may be the odd reference or two in earlier episodes of Sudgeon Stories, but just like me, Epic Lafto had no clue what he wanted to do with this series. Please hold while we connect you to your extension. Carrying on with the subject of Tales of Thomas going forward, I thought it'd be nice to share some upcoming plans for the series. To replace the now missing three episodes, I'd like to reveal to you all some new titles for Season 1. Yo! Oh my god! To replace Blue Mountain Zack, we have a lovely narrow gauge episode centred around our favourite narrow gauge diesels. No help for Rusty. Rusty begins to get worn out, so Fred is tasked with taking over the maintenance trains, with mixed reviews on his performance. You may have also seen a lot of Sonny and Logan together in various clips of the series intro and outro. While those are related to an upcoming season 2 episode, we thought it'd be best to show how Logan came to be. With that said, plan for season 1 is Logan and Hector. After the events of Logan and the Blue Engines, Logan has to rely on a heavy engineered truck on rails to keep his new job at the coaling plant organised. And lastly, for the season 1 fill-in, a brilliant adaption of Chase the Frequentologist original episodes, The Emperor's New Paint. Fed up with James's constant demand for repaints and rude treatment of Victor and the Workmen, Kevin decides to play a trick on James and send him out of the works without any paint on at all. But that's not all folks. As a treat, I'd like to announce some Season 2 titles. Continuing the Electric Railway Saga, we have... Dial E for Electric, Casey Picks a Fight, and A Beacon for Basil. Yes, these are the official titles for Parts 2, 3, and 4 of Basil's story. I won't go into too much detail on the plots, but I'd love to see what your thoughts are in the comments below. I can't confirm dates yet, but we should hope to see Dial E for Electric drop later this year. But after Basil Part 2, we'll be getting festive, and hopefully we should be able to see three wise engines coming this Christmas season. Making a comeback will be Mainland's models. I gave the idea a soft reboot with the steamy subject Thomas and Gordon. While those styles of videos will pertain to the steamy subject models, and yes I will be making more, James gave me the idea of going in depth of the redesigned models and original designs I have made for the series, such as the process that went into making Angus or redesigning Splatter and Dodge. Not sure when they'll be made, but the idea is definitely on the drawing board. They won't be as long as the Thomas video, but they will be fun behind the scenes nonetheless. Fortunately, when designing a character from the ground up like Basil or taking our own spin on someone like Angus, there's a lot more to talk about than just what was being replicated from the show. Please note that with all these things being said, I do have a real life job I must prioritise first. So there may be gaps in activity or things may not come out for a while, but I will post whenever I have updates to talk about. So I thank you all for your patience. If you do want to stay updated regularly, why not come join me over on Patreon? Because I really do believe that the British Plug is one of the greatest designs that has ever hit the world. Patreon is a subscription-based site where for only $10 a month, you can gain access to behind the scenes of models and videos, or exclusive sneak peeks on projects before anyone else. Or, you get to chat with me, Epic Lafto, and chase the Frequentologist on a regular basis. You must be 13 years or older with parents' permission because money is involved. If you want to learn more about the tales of Thomas and his friends or Sunjun stories, check out our Wikipedia pages, where we list episodes, characters, and neat little trivia facts on the content we produce. And if you haven't seen this series yet for some odd reason, there's a link in the pinned comments below to a playlist of all of mine and James's episodes in timeline order. And for sure, go check out Chase's original episodes over on fanfic.net and go listen to Sebi over on SoundCloud. They compose beautiful music for the series. Now, if you stayed watching this long, thank you. As one last treat, I'll leave you with this.
thank you all for watching if you enjoyed this video leave a like and click the subscribe button to stay notified on what comes to the channel next